Hey, what's up everybody? It's Izzy from Powerlifting to Win, and in today's video I'm going to be addressing a question that I've been getting a lot lately. And that question is, so, which novice program do you recommend? Here's the thing, as I've told some of you guys in the comments, there currently is no program out there that I recommend explicitly for novices who know for sure they want to compete in powerlifting. However, out of all the linear progression programs out there, I do think that there is one that is better than the others, and today we're going to discuss that program. It is John Schaefer's Grayskull Linear Progression. If you guys are wondering where to get it, don't worry, I'm going to put a link in the description box. In the rest of this video, we're going to analyze Schaefer's Grayskull LP, and we're going to talk about why I feel it is superior to so many of the other linear progression programs that are floating around out there. As per usual, I want to give you guys a bit of context about the Grayskull LP. Like many of us, John Schaefer ran the Starting Strength Novice program, and by the end of the program, as was my personal experience, he was disillusioned, both with the extra fat gain and with how demotivating it is when you're forced to reset all the time. Now, because John had his own coaching clients, he set out to rectify these issues, and he created a program which did exactly that. Now I want you guys to keep in mind, this program is not primarily intended for powerlifters. Actually, this program is primarily intended for people who want a good blend of strength and muscle mass. It's neither directed explicitly at strength nor at hypertrophy. You're going to get a good mix of both on this program. One of the best aspects of the Grayskull book is the fact that unlike virtually any other novice program, John offers you multiple different options depending on what your interests are. That is, there's a Grayskull variant for fat loss. There's a Grayskull variant that biases towards bodybuilding. There's a Grayskull variant that biases towards weightlifting. And yes, there's a Grayskull variant for powerlifters as well. Schaefer makes use of what he calls a base program. The base program is the aspect that is a part of all of his different templates. But from there, he gives you additional plugins and layers that you can stick into the base program to meet specific goals. So let's take a look at the base program itself. Alright, guys, here's the base program for the Gray School Linear Progression. You can see it's incredibly simple. You alternate the bench and the overhead press every single workout. So you do unfortunately have a 1 to 1 bench to press ratio, which as we know is not optimal for powerlifting. Additionally, you're only doing one set of five on the deadlift every Wednesday. I'm not a huge fan of that, but at least the deadlift is getting some prioritization because you're not also squatting on that day. Now, let's talk about what this 2x5, 1x5 plus thing means, and we'll cover it more in depth later, but just for now, know that that last set, that 1x5 plus, means that you do your five reps and then as many more as you can. Now, I never recommend training to failure for powerlifting purposes. I pretty much think it's inappropriate 99% of the time. It erodes confidence, leads to sloppy technique, and I just don't recommend training to failure. One other attribute of the program that's really worth noting is the fact that your upper body movements actually go first. And this means that you're less tired when you do them and you'll make better hypertrophy and strength gains on your upper body. Because here's the thing, the lower body is more likely to affect your upper body workouts than the other way around. You're never going to have a bench or press workout that's so tough that you can't squat or deadlift as much as you usually can. However, you can easily have a squat workout that's so tough that you can't bench as much as you normally do. So with that said, we'll discuss those AMRAP sets later. For now, I just want to show you guys what the base program actually looks like. Now, one of the common additions to the base program that a lot of people want to make is direct arm work. And, and Shaper gives you a great plug-in to do that. For example, you can alternate chin-ups on your press days with barbell curls on your bench days. And this is going to give you some direct bicep work and really help with bicep hypertrophy. Not that arm training really has anything to do with powerlifting, but I wanted to show you an example of some of the plugins that he includes in the book. This is far from the only one, there's tons of other options, but I just wanted to show you the kind of stuff that Schaefer offers so that you can customize the LP to your goals. These additional plugins and layers are really one of the most critical aspects of the Grayskull LP and what really separates it from other linear progression programs. Because John goes out of his way to make sure that he addresses different goal sets, 
It's going to keep you way more motivated just knowing that the program is explicitly designed to accomplish what you are trying to accomplish. Okay, so let's dig into this 2x5, 1x5 plus thing a little bit further. Now, as I discussed, the 1x5 plus means that on the last set, you're going to do what's called an AMRAP, or as many reps as possible. The way that this is defined as is you go until you feel like the next rep would either be dangerous technique, or you go until you're sure that the next rep would cause failure. And in fact, in many cases, you do go to failure on that last set. Now this AMRAP set is really the true key to the Grayskull LP. It's the engine that makes the whole thing run and it's what separates it from other novice linear progression programs. When you stall, just like in other novice programs, you're going to reset and take 10% weight off of the bar. However, in the Grayskull linear progression method, because you're repping out the last set, when you reset, even though the weight is less, you still have a chance to set rep PRs. So really, no matter what workout you're doing, you have a chance to go for a PR. And this is a whole lot more motivating than when you have to reset and spend three weeks working your way back up to your old weights. In other words, you have a chance to make progress even when you reset. Unlike virtually any of the other novice programs that we've taken a look at thus far, Schaefer does include a competitive plan for the novice who wants to do a powerlifting meet. Six weeks before the meet, you start adding in a heavy single after your final AMRAP set. And basically what you do is you just progress this heavy single linearly. So each time you add two and a half pounds for bench and press and five pounds for squat and deadlift. On top of that, in the last week, instead of doing AMRAP on your final set, you go ahead and just do the minimum reps. And this is going to allow some fatigue to dissipate, and it's going to allow you to perform better at your meet if you're not killing yourself in the week leading up to it. All right, guys, I know this picture is a bit hard to see, so I apologize for that. If you want to see a bigger version, there'll be one included in the article that I'll put in the description box. Now, I just basically wanted to draw your attention to how this uh, bench – how the meet peak would work. So I use the bench press as an example. So you can see starting six weeks out, a heavy single is added after your final AMRAP set. And you just linearly progress that heavy single all the way up until the meet. And doing this, these heavy singles just gets you used to how you're going to do things at the meet. So you're going to want to practice the commands and do it exactly how you would do it at the meet. And this is a great way to make the program a bit more specific for those of you guys who want to compete. And you can see here the key points are, are that you just linear, per, linearly progress that heavy single and then you make sure that in the last week there you don't do an AMRAP on your final set. This is just going to give you that extra boost of recovery to make sure you perform well at the meet. The inclusion of an actual competitive plan is a pretty big advantage of Grayskull over other novice programs. Now, while I don't think that John made his program periodized intentionally, the bottom line is that when you take 10% weight off of the bar and do AMRAPs, you are dividing your phases into those that are more oriented towards hypertrophy and those that are more oriented towards strength. This is because when you reset, you're going to use lighter weights, and lighter weights means that you can do way higher reps. If you're getting 10 to 12 reps in a set, at that point your training is really quite biased towards hypertrophy. Now, as we've discussed elsewhere, this is really not necessary for a novice to make progress, but because you're still maintaining that linear progression, it's not really hurting anything either. For powerlifting purposes, it's not that useful. One of the strengths of Grayskull in terms of programming is just the simplicity. I mean, compared to what we just looked at with Shaco's novice routine. It's just a lot easier for novices to know exactly what they're going to do each day and have it be similar. Novices need to stick to the core basics and master them. And with Grayskull, you're going to have a program that's simple enough to follow along and do that. The one place that the Grayskull LP really falls short in terms of powerlifting is specificity. As I've said over and over again, it's just unnecessary to have the bench and the overhead press be performed in a one-to-one -one ratio. It's just flat out suboptimal for powerlifting to do that. Additionally, the AMRAP sets, in my opinion, are not necessarily ideal for powerlifting. 
And that's due to the fact that EMG studies have shown that after about six rep sets, novices greatly, vastly, and quickly start deteriorating in their ability to maintain motor control. All right, guys, here's that EMG study that I was talking about. You can really see that around rep five or six, both in terms of the EMG activity and the force production, things start to get really uneven. And the exact same thing is happening to the novice who's doing an AMRAP set above six reps. That means basically by the time fatigue sets in around rep seven, most of the reps that the novice does after that are going to be pretty sloppy. And when powerlifting technique is such a huge part of your performance, you can't be doing a bunch of sloppy reps. Now for bodybuilding, some of that slop is probably necessary. Metabolic fatigue is a key ingredient towards building muscle. But again, for powerlifting, we need technical mastery, and we don't want to accumulate sloppy reps. Now John does offer a powerlifting version of the program, and basically the adjustment goes like this. When you cannot do your minimum three by five anymore, you're allowed to switch down to two sets of three and then one final AMRAP of three or more reps. So here's the gray school variant for powerlifting. I mean, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Instead of doing uh, two sets of five followed by an AMRAP of five or more, you do two sets of three followed by an AMRAP of three or more. And you can see all the lifts drop down to triples from being at five. And, and there you have it. That's the gray skull variant for powerlifting. Now, this is fine, and in fact, it makes it more specific to powerlifting because you're working in higher intensities, and higher intensity starts to bias your training more towards maximal strength. And even when you reset from a weight that you could only do a triple at, you're probably not going to get to a weight where you're doing sets of 10. Probably at most, you're going to be doing sets of 7 to 8. So this gets around some of the problem that we had in terms of it being nonspecific. However, in my opinion, two sets of three with one set of three AMRAP is just not enough volume to drive progress. And I think John would agree with this, which is why you're only supposed to switch to two by three, one by three plus for powerlifting once you can't do that minimum two by five, one by five plus anymore. So with that in mind, in terms of fatigue management, we're really left with a scenario where we have to choose between either something that's not quite specific enough or something that isn't going to be enough volume to drive adaptation. And we don't necessarily have to settle for that. So this is one of the weaknesses of Grayskull LP for powerlifters. Now one of the things that I really like about the Grayskull LP is that John mandates you use microplates to do the program. If you don't get microplates, you cannot do Grayskull linear progression. And this is key because so many of you guys think that you should be progressing your bench and your overhead press by five pounds a workout. That is just unsustainable. You need to get microplates so that you can take two and a half pound jumps on the upper body lifts. So with that in mind, the overload method in gray school is really pretty simple. For every squat and deadlift workout that you do, you add five pounds to the bar compared to what you did last time. For every bench and press workout that you do, you add two and a half pounds. Now here's the interesting thing. The overload in gray school is not determined only by the weight on the bar. In fact, it's also determined by the AMRAP set. Regardless of how much weight there is on the bar, at least for that last training set, you're going to get a good training stimulus because you're going to push yourself pretty damn close to failure. One of the reasons that I consider Grayskull superior to virtually all of the other novice linear progression programs that we've looked at is that it introduces auto-regulation in terms of the volume and regulation in terms of the weight progression. So let's start with the rate of progression thing. Now, if you're only increasing by a fixed increment every single time, say five pounds, you can only improve your performance by five pounds. If you have a good day, you can't really take advantage of it. And if you have a bad day, you're just kind of screwed. However, with that AMRAP set buffer in place, what can happen is that if you add two and a half pounds and you get much stronger than two and a half pounds, you'll also add reps. So you're not limited by a specific increment increase. If, you may, if you're capable of making faster progress, you will. Additionally, John makes another allowance that allows you to progress at your, at your own rate as well. 
If you start getting more than 10 to 12 reps on your AMRAPs, you're allowed to take a double jump. So instead of doing two and a half on bench or press, you would jump five pounds. Instead of doing five pounds on squat or deadlift, you would jump 10 pounds. And that's if, if you're able to add reps so quickly that you get into that 10 to 12 rep range. So again, you can make progress at your own rate on this program, which is key. Because as we know, not everybody is going to have the same rate of progress, even if they are all novices. Lastly, even though it's not incredibly significant, the volume is auto-regulated a bit in this program, and that is due to the fact that when you're feeling really good, on your AMRAP you're going to get more reps, and that's going to mean more volume that day. When you're feeling like crap, you're not going to do as well on your AMRAP set, and you're not going to get as many reps, and you're not going to do as much volume. Granted, it's only one set, so you're not auto-regulating your total volume, but at the same time, even this little bit of volume model regulation can go a long ways towards addressing individual differences. As I've said elsewhere, I believe that the gray school linear progression is currently the best available method for novices on the market. If you're interested in a good mix of strength and hypertrophy, this is absolutely the program for you. However, for us power lifters, there are still some improvements and refinements that can be made to this program. So while the Grayskull LP is very good, it's, we can still do better as novice powerlifters. There's ways that we can keep the elements of autoregulation without going above six reps. We can increase the bench frequency, and we can make a few other subtle adjustments to make the program more specific towards powerlifting. Nonetheless, overall, I do personally recommend the Grayskull Linear Progression Method. It's a great option for you novices out there. Alright guys, if there's any other beginner programs that you want me to review, say something in the comments soon, because if you don't, the next video that I'm going to be doing will be the last beginner program video. And that video is going to be the Powerlifting to Win Novice Powerlifting Program. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be 100% free for those of you guys who are wondering about that. And I really think it's going to be a program that delivers great results for those of you out there who do have powerlifting goals as novices. Now I said this in my last video too, but one other thing I'd like to address is that if you really like these thorough programmatic analyses, I highly recommend that you grab a copy of Practical Programming. The, some of the concepts that I just touch upon in these videos are expounded upon for hundreds of pages in that book. Again, if you consider yourself a student of the game, in my opinion, it's almost a must read. If you guys found this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and send it out into the interwebs for me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out powerliftingtowin.com for more great powerlifting information. Have a nice day.